October 23rd, 1983. Ring any bells? For the majority of you, probably not. You'll probably remember December 7th, 1941, or September 11th, 2001. However, October 23rd, 1983 is just as significant in our country's history, as well as our cores. Many argue it's the day the War on Terror truly began. It was a Sunday morning, and just like many Sundays, the Marines were enjoying a couple extra hours of sleep during their deployment to Beirut, Lebanon. Dave Medeiros was a private first class who had just finished up his motor transport course. His final test was scheduled for Monday. I woke up at 6 a.m. on Sunday morning, a, and we were in a GP tent sleeping on cots, and I looked around, and I was like, man, all these guys are still sleeping. And, and probably for one of the first times in my life, I chose to go back to sleep versus eat, which is a rare occasion. I don't do that often. HM3 Mark Hakala was serving as a platoon hospital corpsman with Bravo Company, positioned on the southern end of the airport. I hadn't been to sleep for terribly long, and so I was pretty down and out. Major Bob Jordan was the Marine spokesman for the 24th Marine Amphibious Unit. He was with his crew in these fire truck bays not far from the BLT headquarters. About six o'clock I woke up my normal time. I could see the sun shining through the bullet holes in the corrugated door of the fire bay door where we slept. So I rolled away from the door and, and pulled my uh, Snoopy blanket up over me to catch a few more winks. Greetings to the families of Battalion Landing Team 1-8. Lieutenant Colonel Larry Gerlock, the commanding officer of 1-8, was in the BLT headquarters. It was both his command post and his barracks. Around 6.20 a.m., everything changed. PFC Medeiros was no longer sleeping under a tent. Petty Officer Hakala and Major Jordan were now wide awake. Colonel Gerlach was no longer in the BLT building. What was the largest non-nuclear explosion on the planet had just wiped the building out. A 12,000 pound explosion that would ring for decades. America lost 241 Marines, sailors, and soldiers in the rubble that day. Terrorists finally landed a powerful hit. That's their playbook. They built their playbook over time and, and uh, I would call it like a cult, a cult who is following a, an ideology and they're building their playbook based on how we respond to certain things. And I mean, they're, they're taking notes. When the Marines pulled out in 1984, Osama bin Laden and many others were watching. They had tested us militarily. They had tested us spiritually, they had tested us politically. America's defensive playbook was rewritten, but the punches kept rolling. Kobar Towers in Saudi Arabia, USS Cole in Yemen, 9-11. The prevent defense prevents nothing. And if that's the posture we want to take in the United States, okay, I'd like to ask the people that think that way to come down to Jacksonville and stand there next to a mother who lost one of their kids in Beirut and explain to her how we should take a preventative posture. And that armed attack against the United States of America should... With September 11th, the extremist agenda had an exclamation point and the U.S. launched combat operations in what is now known as the Global War on Terror. But Beirut veterans say it should have been declared more than two decades ago, with an event that now simply hangs in the distant backdrop of time. In the United States, a lot of times we fall asleep. They do something and they let it die out, you know, and we're all excited about, you know, the price of gasoline or, or, or you know, whatever the topic of the day is. And we totally lose sight of, of an issue that really has a lot of substance to it. I think many of us wonder, had we taken a firm stance and a firm response at that time, all these other attacks that took place in the coming decades, would they have been tried? Would they have been attempted? 
All of the Beirut veterans we interviewed live by a common motto, our first duty is to remember. Lieutenant Colonel Gerlach still remembers. He's still in a wheelchair because of it. He doesn't remember the blast itself. He attributes that lost memory to the large piece of concrete they had to remove from his head after he was blown out of the BLT building. But he remembers his fellow Marines and sailors from that day. And he says, the fight is still on. And I hate war. But by damn, uh, if, if we don't take a stand, uh, just imagine what would have happened in uh, World War II and how that would have turned out in all the other wars that, uh, that have gone on. Major Jordan says victory is in the memories veterans leave behind. They were sailors and marines. We stood against tyranny. We stood against terror. And we have to remember, make the people who, who, who wish us harm, they need to know that we were not defeated in Beirut. We're still here. And our sons and our daughters, and our grandsons and our granddaughters, will be told the story, and they will be here for generations in the future, and that's the hope of America. They came in peace, and now they walk on peaceful shore.